Looking forward to uh, seeing this property today, walking it with the landowner, understanding his goals and objectives, and creating a plan specifically for him. Look how much more canopy is on this row of trees right here where there's 15 feet maybe. And then go, you know, look in there 30, 40 feet. And you got a little bitty old candle-like canopy on top of the tree. Yeah. Well, that's sunshine, right? That's, these trees have all, what well, is called self-pruned. And like, let's just go here about 25 yards or so. And the canopy's maybe what? The top 10, 15 feet of that tree over there, maybe? Mm -hmm. And real narrow, look how, look, the limbs all do this. They come out and go right up. Where over here, the limbs are much more, you know, running parallel to the ground. They're reaching out for the sun. And this isn't much. Again, we're 15, 20 feet wide here. So these pine trees are starving because you have to photosynthesize to get groceries if you're a plant, right? You don't get any groceries unless you photosynthesize. This needs to be thinned. This just hasn't been maintained. And, 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 and no one planted, like, right here there's 15 or 20 trees yeah. right here in the little space right here no one planted that right those were volunteer from a post pine harvest no one planted them that thing you can see the smaller ones are dying because they starved mm -hmm. out from sun so mm -hmm. to save these and to make better wildlife habitat i would want to thin these down to what we we're talking about earlier 60 basal feet per acre so if this tree right here is a foot i'm not saying it is but it's pretty close to mm -hmm. it you'd want 60 of those trees per acre and then that canopy, you would take out that tree and that tree and all the trees around it, and that canopy can do this. And when trees get really weak because they're starving, just like us, we're more susceptible to get parasites because our body can't defend them all. Well, same with trees. So you're seeing some mortality in here now, and you see trees leaning over and already dead and whatnot, and that's just going to increase. And if you live long enough, there'll be a few that survive and get real tall, but you don't want that. You want to man, you know, it's a crop. Pines are a crop. You want to manage these for future return and also better wildlife habitat quality. So we would want these thinned. Grant and I are in Alabama today, touring a property. Grant's walked off with the landowner. They're looking at a few things and I'm exploring, looking at some habitat, seeing what we've got in some other areas. and look down here in this area and there's several pines and the landowner one of the things they said they want to improve is some habitat so they can hunt turkeys well turkey poult that brooding habitat is an important part to seeing and having turkeys and you look down here in this area where there's several pines they got a little stand of pines through here and there is a pile of pine straw i mean pile of pine straw look at all that and you imagine a little turkey poult with, you know, quarter inch, half inch legs. It's just hatched and it's just trying to run down through this straw. It can't get through there. It gets bogged down. And we see the same thing, you know, I, I mentioned earlier a few weeks ago on social media, the same thing in, you know, our hardwoods where it's just a big, thick leaf litter. Same idea. This is not turkey habitat. This is not brooding habitat we need to get those grasses and forbs on the ground get bare ground where those turkey poults can run along that bare ground underneath but be covered up by forbs and and have bunches of grass through there where they can run in between those grass bunches and that's that's quality habitat for turkey poults grant and i are going to prescribe that this landowner work on improving some of their native habitat in these pine stands and that's going to mean thinning some pines and getting more sunlight to the ground and then using fire to remove this straw just like we would in hardwoods removing the leaf litter so that sunlight can get to the ground and get more forbs now what's really cool is i walk you know 10 yards right here and look at this i'm right here on an interior road there's sunlight hitting the ground and we have this the power of sunlight right there and now these are our, you know big flowering big broadleaf plants and now right here where there's sunlight this is what we've got the power of sunlight right there no sunlight shaded little pocket we've got some you know little bit of habitat this is what this property could produce we've got a seed bank we just need some sunlight hitting the ground so this property is going to turn around 100 acres here in alabama very excited about 
uh, working with this landowner today to improve their habitat. And we're gonna go up here and kind of see what's around the next corner. And this area is pretty much called Plateau Valley, the Ridge and Valley type habitat. And it'd be real flat up on top up here ways and drop down, depending on where you are, six, seven, eight hundred feet. But in Appalachia country, and this is kind of on the tail end of that, a lot of times you find coves or cove hardwood, just like a lake cove, except this would be a mountain cove. And we come here, and this ridge really makes about a 90 degree right up here in front of us. You see how exposed rock all over the edge of the plateau, so to speak. Well, that dirt through farming and logging in the past is worse right down here. And these hardwoods are super tall right here. I'm not a good guess, but 7,500 feet tall. I mean, they're super tall, way taller than anything we saw down there on the creek, right? And this is a cove and cove hardwoods. Now, look around, folks. This is bare leaf, and this is not much for deer habitat, except when they make acorns. And when the oaks in here make acorns, man, deer, if you had bear in the area, bear, turkeys are all in here. But these coves, think about the shape of a cove, because the wind's gonna swirl. They're notoriously tough to hunt. I like to come in midday when the air is rising, a warmer day the air is rising. Get up on those rocks, you don't have to have a stand or blind and hunt, hopefully something comes through mid-afternoon, but their minutes were dark, that air's gonna start sinking. You might as well get out of here because your scent is going downhill. But very typical or prototypical example of cove hardwood, straight, almost no undergrowth, really tall trees, and a few hardwoods enough to make acorns in here. So as Grant and I moved through the property, we were a little bit ago up on a steep slope, hardwoods, uh, we stopped and talked about the kind of that cove area, the cove hardwoods. Well, as we walk through that area, man, it, it's just to do some habitat work and whatnot, the landowner just isn't going to see the results for the cost of that work and that those resources. So we prescribe that the landowner focus on maybe doing a few small improvements, maybe cutting some shooting lanes or whatnot so they can effectively hunt that area but focus their habitat work down here on this slope. You can see back behind me, this is much flatter. So they're gonna see a bigger and better result for their work on this flatter slope where we can do some habitat work and it can be effectively hunted. So we're considering terrain, we're considering access, all these things are coming into play when we're saying this is where you need to focus on your habitat work this is where we're doing TSI or a food plot or whatnot so as we walk through the property we kind of identify those areas that it's worth going in and doing habitat work and, and this is a great area where we can get many acres of quality habitat whether that's native habitat whether we do some hack and squirt in some sections of this or create a a destination food plot on this these flat acres but we're going to get a lot more um, bang for our buck if you will in this area so that's why it's really important for grant and i to as we tour these properties really get boots on the ground and and really see the terrain and the habitat so we can we can determine what the best prescription is been up here in the mountains of North Alabama, had a beautiful day, and this property was kind of cool. We'll show you some maps probably, but it's pine up to a certain elevation, and then hardwoods on top. And the hardwood part is pretty steep, and we found a nice trail up there and the rubber too, and a few tracks where we thought they'd be crossing. You could kind of look at terrain and say, well, the annual neuter's trail gonna be, and we found a few places. But we can do more here in the pines. You can't really see them from here, but there's pines here and on this lower, lower degree slope and we need to thin and we need to spray because there's some sweet gum in there and they're going to take over if we get more daylight down and then it prescribed fire every two or three years when it's dry enough to burn safely not you know everyone wants a date do i burn on march 15th or 17th it makes no difference it's when it's dry enough to burn and you can control the fire and hopefully your burn that's called a dormant season burn or a growing season august september when you burn different times a year different species respond. Of course, whitetails are very select feeders, so burning different times of year, you get more diversity of plants. So give us a week two to come up plan. May want to help you with the forester. Why don't you dig around locally if you find something great. If not, we know some guys that do travel all over, do great work, and we'll do what we want. 
that's from that's a important. wildlife point of view. Yeah. Not that's... just how many trees can I take off the mountain. Yeah. No, don't want that. Yeah. So anyway. All right. So looking forward to it. And, and what I'm really looking forward to is pictures as you make progress because mm -hmm. I love what drives me and Daniel, Daniel and I seeing progress and hearing happy reports, not just a grip and grin of a turkey or a deer, but man, I'm seeing species I've never seen before. My deer body weights have went up 15%. Those are things that really tell us you didn't get lucky and just killed one deer, right? You got, you're making progress. Sure. So exactly. looking forward to it. Thanks for the opportunity to come out here. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate having you. Yeah. Grant, thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's been great. Yeah.